Molecular HIV Surveillance MHS, is a growing research and public health surveillance practice that has concerning implications for human rights. It uses blood samples taken from people living with HIV during routine drug resistance testing and then stores these samples in surveillance databases so that they can be used for public health purposes. Some people consider this to be an exciting new public health tool that can help identify HIV transmission hotspots and ultimately end the epidemic. So why is it that HIV activists are so concerned about this new technology? Even though molecular HIV surveillance can be a useful public health tool, it's often done unknowingly without consent. It's been rolled out without any community involvement or engagement. Surveillance is often linked to the policing of our communities, where black and brown people are disproportionately targeted. When you combine MHS with HIV criminalization, it's a perfect storm. Molecular HIV surveillance, MHS for short, is an umbrella term that describes how scientists and public health practitioners analyze the blood samples of people living with HIV to track how the virus is moving between people and populations. MHS can detect patterns of transmitted drug resistance or rates of HIV transmission in a given area, but it can also identify groups of people with similar strains of HIV and link them together. Some scientists and public health folk argue that this approach can be used to link hard to reach people to testing, treatment, and care faster than less problematic tried and trusted methods. But a growing number of human rights activists, including people living with HIV, have deep concerns about the ethics of MHS and believe it may do more harm than good to both public health and human rights. Our global review revealed many concerns on the practices of MHS, most specifically concerns arising in the context of public health where data is being collected on people living with HIV without their knowledge or consent as part of a public health surveillance system and then used to inform public health interventions. This is taking place in countries which actively criminalize sex work, drug use, migration and HIV and where data about HIV transmission networks is being shared in unprecedented new ways that is intended to identify people. Sometimes public health institutions will then share their data with researchers who conduct even more analysis on people without their knowledge or consent. The list of our concerns is long. To name a few, many people do not consent to having their data used in any other way outside of informing their doctor to receive better care. MHS research, public health surveillance, and public health intervention occur without explicit consent from people living with HIV. This means it's increasingly important we have community consultation and engagement to mitigate potential social harms. MHS is frequently applied to already marginalized and criminalized communities. This includes gay and other men who have sex with men, trans women, sex workers, people who use drugs, migrants, and people experiencing houselessness. Public health agencies have historically shared their data with researchers, and funders of this kind of research often require the resulting data to be made public. The issue of trying to prove direct transmission is controversial and is addressed by many researchers with widely varying views. The science behind direct transmission is still contested, and there's concern that such analysis is harmful if it is misused and misunderstood in HIV criminalization cases. In every jurisdiction in the world, even where health privacy laws exist, MHS data, along with other medical records, can always be subpoenaed by a court and used as evidence in criminal investigations or court cases. That means if MHS evidence were included in an investigation or trial, even if the results only inferred that the HIV strain of one person was older than the strain of another, but the limitations of this evidence were not clearly explained and understood, this could actually suffice for a conviction. Just like with HIV criminalization, MHS assumes that people living with HIV are solely responsible for HIV prevention, that were just clusters and targets of public health interventions and not the beneficiaries of public health. We are people, not clusters. We are the public too. 
And that's why, as global coordinator of the HIV Justice Worldwide Coalition, I commissioned Positive Women's Network USA to produce Molecular HIV Surveillance, a global review of human rights implications, as a first step to understand the problems and to suggest a range of possible solutions. The main aim of this briefing paper is to help support people living with HIV, activists, legal experts, and human rights campaigners in understanding the complexities and consequences of MHS. We start with a detailed explanation of what MHS is and then how it is used across the globe, including how the technology works, where it is being conducted, and by whom. The report then describes the growing human rights concerns relating to the use of this technology and goes on to list a number of recommendations for the use of MHS, which were gathered from a survey of international literature and from members of our expert advisory group. Take seriously and act upon community concerns about MHS. Respect the bodily autonomy and integrity of people living with HIV in all our diversity. MHS implementers must demonstrate a clear public health benefit that outweighs the potential harms of MHS, including by ensuring protections such as data privacy, legal protections and social harms prevention. Demonstrated benefits of MHS must measurably include people living with HIV. Providers ordering HIV sequencing must inform people living with HIV about how their blood and data are being used for MHS purposes and be allowed to withdraw consent if they so wish, without fear of negative consequences to their HIV treatment and care. Implementers of MHS should publicly advocate against punitive or coercive laws and policies aimed at people living with HIV and ensure that MHS is never used in criminal, civil or immigration investigations or prosecutions. People living with HIV in the U.S. are so concerned about MHS that we have called for a moratorium on the practice until adequate safeguards protecting the privacy and autonomy of people living with HIV are implemented. We're really concerned about this in Canada too, but as we've discovered in our research for the paper, this is being rolled out in many places around the world, and we want to make sure that everyone is aware of what can happen. We've already made an impact in our advocacy. MHS researchers in Washington State decided to cancel their plans to publish their paper on MHS as a result of the concerns that we brought to their attention. Instead, they decided to write a paper on the community engagement process they went through to make the decision not to publish the original research. Go to hivjusticeworldwide.org MHS where you can download the paper Molecular HIV Surveillance, a Global Review of Human Rights Implications. Get others engaged, and not just from the HIV sector, but also from other movements, such as other health areas and the data privacy movement. Let's start a conversation here, online or elsewhere. Hashtags and MHS, HIV, HIV justice, data privacy. And very soon, let's get together and strategize.